All right. Welcome back to Smashing Pillars International. My name is Samuel. We're coming to you from Houston, Texas. Yeehaw. And uh, uh, this message is going to be uh, the third and final part of the uh, Nephilim Marine Water Spirits teaching. And uh, man, I've learned some new things uh, from, you know, from these lessons. And uh, I, I hope that you have, uh, you know, I was in the last, uh, let's see, last Saturday, uh, in the in the actual gathering in the sanctuary, I asked everyone there how many had ever heard of a marine spirit or a water spirit, and only one hand went up in the entire congregation. And so that was just a, a confirmation to me that the Lord wanted me to talk about that this subject. So um, it's it's real, you know. Whenever we, uh, most Christians, when you think uh, when you hear about spirits or if you were to be asked where where are the spirits at, you would say in the heavenlies, right? Uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? Spiritual wickedness in high places, in the heavenlies. Uh, but you know they're also in the water. There are kingdoms in the water, and uh, in the oceans, in the seas, in the rivers, in the lakes. And so, um, I just felt like it was really important because I've been getting you know several calls and, and emails about uh, spiritual attacks and they were all marine or water spirit attacks and so uh, anyway so that's that's why these that's why I put these messages out for that reason so uh, I hope that they they've been a blessing to you they were a blessing to me I learned some new things myself as I was you know studying for these these three uh, lessons so um, that being said, also just want to remind you, keep praying for Israel, pray for the IDF, pray for the hostages that, that, that are there, pray for the, the Gazans, you know, the, that, you know, do not want to be under Hamas's rule, pray that God would dismantle Hamas and Hezbollah, uh, as quick as possible, quick as possible. And, um, yeah, pray for the families of you know, the soldiers that have been lost and those that are on the front line. You know, I've been to Israel many times. The first time I ever went was in 2013. The first thing I noticed when I went is that pretty much the entire nation suffers from PTSD under constant rocket attack. And, um, you know, it's something that maybe here in America, we you, you couldn't comprehend that, but um, it was very obvious when I went there. And, um, uh, we just need to pray for them and thank God that, you know, we've never experienced anything like that here in America. And, uh, I pray that we never, ever get to. And so, all right, well, so let's go ahead and get the, the, uh, lesson started again. That's a uh, Nephilim Marine water spirits, part three, father, I just thank you right now, Lord, I pray that you would open our minds, open our understandings to comprehend your scriptures. God, I thank you right now, Lord, for my brothers and my sisters that are listening to this message. And I break every assignment of the enemy to distract them, to bring offense in any way or confusion. I break those assignments right now. I call that assignment to nothing. I break and cancel it. And Lord, I thank you now that you would anoint my brothers and sisters. Lord, that you would anoint them, Lord, that they would come away from this message with new tools in their tool belts, Lord, so to speak. Spiritual tools. And... Uh, Lord, and those that need to be set free would be set free from water spirits or marine spirits just by listening, just listening to the message that they would get set free. And I thank you uh, for that. And I give you the glory for it in Jesus mighty name. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, they use material financial resources to manip manipulate their devotees. Bow before me and I'll make you rich. And so on. You see that a lot with celebrities and these pop stars, these singers and all that. They are quick to tell you what gods they're worshiping. Okay. Um, in scripture, you see that um, from time to time, leaders call times of fasting and prayer. Remember, I've shared this passage many times, this story about Jehoshaphat. And uh, he called a fast and God said, this the battle's not yours. It's, it's the Lord's. Then you have water babies. Have you ever heard of water babies? Okay. 
They're legends of water babies. They, there are many reports of unusual drownings where the bodies are never recovered. How many times these people drown and they never recover the bodies? Okay. They probably taken somewhere into another realm. Another one there. All right, so how do marine or water spirits operate? They work with marine priests and marine agents, basically witches and warlocks. Okay, that's basically what they are. They maintain evil altars from where they launch their attacks. The works they do are counterfeits of the work of God, uh, the work that God does through his intercessors. Covens get their assignments from uh, the adversary just as we get our assignments from the Lord. They work with demons, spirits, and fallen angels. We work with the host of heaven, angels, and celestials. We decree the testimony of Jesus Christ, and the angels go and do it. Amen. Amen. Psalm uh, 103, verse 19 through 21. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. Heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Amen. So how do you become a victim of water spirits? Okay, there are various ways that marine spirits can enter a person's life to afflict, oppress, and even possess. Uh, here's some of the following. Consulting marine agents posing as false priests, ministers, prophets, and pastors. Okay. You have them... Saying, go do something, some weird stuff in the in, in a river or whatever. It's one thing to go and be baptized or something like that, you know. But if they're telling you to do some weird things in the body of water, I would really question that. Uh, there's something behind that stuff, yeah. Yeah, throwing coins, making a wish. Who are you making a wish to? Right? Is, is, is it God? No? Here, God, I'll give you a tip. You know, <laughs> uh, two evil dedication to marine powers, evil initiation into marine societies. Um, you see people so open to the occult today. Okay, a while back, maybe a couple of years ago, I told y'all about a device called the soul phone. I remember that. It's a phone that they were working on that was going to give you the ability to contact people on the other side. And the first phase was you would have a, 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 a selection from a, like 10 questions or something like that, that you could ask somebody that you wanted to, to con contact on the other side. It could be a deceased relative. It could be Elvis, whoever, Mussolini, whoever. Okay. But you had this list of like 10 questions you could ask. And, and then it would respond to you, yes or no. Okay. And then this, the next phase to this phone would be that you could actually text message and they would respond, whatever spirit, whoever you were talking to on the other side, would respond to you with text messages, a text message. Then um, the next one, the next phase was they eventually were going to get you to where you could actually have a conversation on, like call and talk to, to them. And then the last phase of the soul phone, you can you can look this up yourself. The last phase of this soul phone would be that you could do a video call. OK. All right. So at first, you know, I thought, ah, you know, ah, that's demonic, whatever. I wonder how they're going to do that. And maybe it's a scam and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but there was an article in the newspaper here recently that I, I don't know if it was Mattel. Is that one of the toy makers? Yeah. I think it was Mattel. They put out. Uh, AI generated Ouija board. AI, where you could actually, you know, on your computer, pull up this Ouija board and ask whatever questions you wanted to, and AI would generate a response to whatever spirit, whoever it was you were talking to. Mm -hmm. So they are, they're merging the technology, you know? So, um, <clears throat> So evil initiation into marine societies, evil association through contact with marine agents that initiate people through eating their food, having sex with them, sharing clothes and personal property with them. Um, that's why you have to always be careful about stuff like um, Cynthia brought this picture in. Uh, what was it two weeks ago? She had a, a I don't know if it was a, what was it a painting or something? It was something like that that 
she just saw the invite that I said that I sent out that it was going to be about marine spirits, and she noticed that this this piece of art had uh, what looked like maybe mermaids or something like that, and then there were some men. They looked like men with coats and all that, but then they had tails coming out of the coats. Yeah, and I said, yeah, those are those. Yeah, you got to get rid of that. So she said, you want it? <laughs> and I said, yes, give it to me. Thank you. You're not leaving with it. And I, 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 I took care of it. Yes. We, we burnt it. All right. Um, family, village, or territorial ancestral worship of and dedication to marine deities and idols such as Olakon, queen of the coast, even if this was done generations back, you have to renounce and break the dedication in order to be set free. Not set back, but set free. That's a typo. Um, evil ancestral, uh, ancestral covenants. Eight, your mother worshiped them while pregnant with you. Okay. Uh, nine, bathe uh, with polluted waters at birth or with concoctions from the waters. Uh, your first bath water used for rituals in the waters, like Hispanic. In some Hispanic cultures, they're they're all about things like this. Okay, special waters, special uh, holy waters that you use. Yeah, things like that. Uh, through uh, let's see, eleven through satanically inspired music. Uh, sometimes the music you're you're singing along the music, you love the music, you like the beats and and all that kind of stuff, but the words are really incantations. And you you, you don't even realize you're actually singing incantations. Um, I was listening to this one song the other day. It caught my ear and it was like, it sounds on the surface like a woman singing to a man about how she wants to be intimate with him and she's saying, come into me. But it wasn't really that. It was, it was she was talking to a spirit saying, come in and embody me. Mm -hmm. And it's a real popular song real popular dance song okay and I said mm, nah no thank you all right uh, evil association through careless friendships remember that Lord gave me a word a couple of months ago about uh, being properly aligned and allowing him to realign you 13 reveal your secrets you reveal your secrets to marine agents or witches right through talkativeness you just can't resist telling everybody all your business Um, I want to say this, but I want to be careful the way I say it. Do so you ever have, like, you're going through something and people are praying for you? Or you, and then they'll come and say, hey, is everything going okay? I've been praying for you. Tell me what's going on. Is everything okay? It, you might have somebody say, hey, you know, I've been praying for you. Is everything all right? Should I keep praying for you? That's one thing. But if they want to know specifically what's going on, has anything changed? Has anything not changed? Where should I be focusing on? I'd be kind of, you know, careful with that person. They might, they might just be asking to know, to see if what they're doing is working. 16, things from your body thrown into the water. These trigger evil covenants with water spirits. 17, sacrifice carried to the river, either by you or on your behalf. That would be like those altars that I just showed you earlier today. Uh, tonight. 20, marriage to spirit spouses from the waters. Some people move about as men and women, but they're actually from the waters. Uh, their parents got them from the waters. Though they live among us, they're not human. Receiving gifts. Uh, evil laying on of hands. Marine agents had access to your head. These include demonic barbers, pastors, priests, kings, etc. Remember I told y'all a while back I was going to this one barber who God was having me go there just to ministry. That was why he had me grow my hair. Something was going on there that had to do with my hair that was being left behind. So there was like this thing going on. And I mean, it didn't affect me, but God showed me what was going on. And eventually he said, oh, don't go back anymore because that guy wasn't going to, he, he wasn't moving. He wasn't changing. Uh, employing marine agents or living in their house, either as a tenant or as a visitor, living, working or doing business on land dedicated to marine marine powers. You know, there was a grace one time at, at a time there was grace for you to have friend, a friend that was oh my friend. Yeah, he's he kind of 
practice the occult and all that, but we're friends. And I mean, he respects me and I respect him and that's it. But we're friends. There may have been a grace on that at one time. There's not a grace on that anymore. Okay. And you know, you, you, you associate with people like that and you know what they're doing and you're not even at all trying to convert them. You're just hanging out with them because they're cool. And we've known each other for a long time. You're going to start having problems. Okay. Another way that you, you know, that like, you see, like I've, I've gone to people's houses to pray for them because they're like, man, I got, I got, I don't know. I need prayer. Something's going on and I can't seem to get a breakthrough and all that. And I'll go to their house and they have a ton of like, um, they collect, uh, seahorses, but like, it's almost like a shrine. Everything is seahorse, 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 right? That's, that's a sign that there's probably a water spirit going, something going on there or dolphins. Or, you know, but it's like one thing, right? Lighthouses. So everything lighthouses, right? There's, there's probably something going on there. Um, not always, but that, that may be a sign, okay? Uh, symptoms of marine witchcraft attack. One, dream, dreams of water such as oceans or rivers. We talked about that. Dream of swimming in the water, meaning you know, your fire has gone down. They have succeeded in reinitiating, rededicating you. Uh, you have to break all evil dedication. You have a stubborn, vicious spirit, husband or wife. Uh, we were talking about that earlier before the meeting started. Uh, seeing marine animals in your dreams, such as crocodiles, water turtles, crabs, serpents. Uh, attacked by marine snakes. Hardship. Prayer and fasting becomes difficult. Uh, leads people into spiritual marriage, which have terrible repercussions. Nine. Cause delay and difficulty in getting married and failure in earthly marriages. Uh, 10, they demand uh, for your worship and make your life hell if you do not give it. Uh, 11, cause poverty as they confiscate your money and bank it under the waters. Ele uh, 12, terrible dream attacks, including sex in the dream. That's uh, another form of dream sorcery, okay? Uh, 13, encounters with spirits, uh, spouse and spirit children. I had a woman who had a marine spirit, okay? And wasn't even by the water. But um, I saw her all the time in church and she had grown children, adult children. They were always together as a family and stuff like that. And uh, one night I was at the church and there was a guy there and he came over to me. I knew the guy. He said, uh, hey, I got to tell you something. Do you know that so-and-so thinks you're her husband? And I said, who? And he says, you know, so-and-so. And I said, nah. He said, yeah, for about two years now. I said, for two years? He said, yeah. And I said, he said, you don't feel anything? or anything? I said, man, I sleep like a baby, dude. I don't feel nothing. And he said, I go and spend the night over there sometimes on the weekend because I'm friends with her son, right? And she does weird things. She comes out of her room glowing in the morning. And she says that she and uh, she tells her, everybody in the house calls you daddy. I said, what? They said, they call you daddy. And she'll come out of her room and she'll say, daddy came and visited me last night and we had sex again. And I said, not this daddy. <laughs> and he said, no, dude, I'm serious. And, 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 and she'll come out and she, she has this picture of you and a picture of herself. And she taped them together side by side. And they all get together in a circle. She, they, they even made me do it. And they all get in a circle and they lay hands on the pictures and they say, Daddy, come home. Daddy, come home. And they start saying all kinds of things over you and asking God to bring you. And I said, really? He said, yes. And I said, I know, right? He says, you don't feel nothing? And I said, I sleep like a baby. <laughs> I was totally <laughs> oblivious to it, you know? That's why I'm saying. You, you have these things going on, but I'm telling you, you're, you're good, okay? But if you see it going on in someone's life, set them free. Help them get free from it. Because a lot of people don't understand this. So the Lord had me, you know, I was go to church every Sunday. There she was. There they were. And they would look at me and they were like, hi. And it was weird now because I knew what was going on. And I'd be like, hey, what's up? You know? <laughs> and the Lord told me one day, he said, you need to go talk to her after service. So I said, okay. So I went over. And they were just hanging out in the sanctuary. I went over there and I said, hey, 
how you doing? And she looked at them and they looked at her and she's like, you could tell like, this is it. <laughs> so can I talk to you for a second? And I just went straight to it. I was like, hey, you know what? Um, I'm not your husband. And she said, yes, you are. And I said, no, 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 I'm not. The Lord wanted me to tell you that. I'm not your husband. You're not my wife. I, I, you, you're going to make an awesome wife to somebody, but not me. You know? And she said, no, I, I, I've had confirmation from people here in the church and leadership that you're my husband. And I said, uh, I don't know about that. But I'm not your husband. And then this is what she did, guys. She said, yes, you are. And the Lord is speaking to you about it right now. Don't resist him. He's talking to you about it right now. I know. And I said, no, he's not. He's not saying anything right now. Okay. You're not my wife. And, uh, and you know, I, I had to like really talk to her about it and, and then left it at that. But you, you'd be surprised at the stuff that goes on out there. Okay. Now I think, and I'm not like saying anything that I'm anything. Right. But I think if I didn't have some sort of prayer life, that stuff would affect me. Right. It will start to affect you, but you have a, a, a form of prayer life and, uh, and it made me really realize things because there are times where I'm praying and the Lord will say, break witchcraft against you. And I don't really sense like I'm under any kind of attack or anything. Nothing obvious that would make me pray like that. But the Lord will say, hey, you need to pray and break this. Come against this. Bind that spirit. And I'm glad I do those things because that's probably why I was sleeping like a baby while they were doing all that crazy stuff. You know? Yeah, really. And so you need to you need to have that prayer life, guys. All right, marriage, 14, marriages, mis miscarriages, barrenness, 15, unexplainable hindrances to progress, 16, uncontrollable sexual urges, 17, unexplainable failure uh, where there should be success, particularly after evil sex encounters in the dream. All right, so the way out, repent, okay? Repent from all known sins and flee from rebellion. Anything that is an open door, man, lay it down. Get, get rid of it already. Wean yourself off of whatever it is. That's what Janice would say. Wean yourself off of that. Okay. Number two, uh, surrender your life to and rededicate your life to God. Um, man, I ask the Lord all the time, Lord, how is it between you and I? Amen. How is it between hey. us? You know, am, am I okay? Yep. You know, I, I, I want to make sure I'm okay. Three, repent and re, uh, re, repent and restitu restitute if necessary. Four, renounce and break all evil initiations and dedications. In other words, you have friendships you know you shouldn't be having. Okay, you need to get rid of them. Um, five, raise uh, prayer altars against them. Bombarding prayers is requ required. Required. Uh, ensure you're living a holy life and that you do not have their materials in your possession. These include their robes, candles, creams, soap, sponge, mirrors, and incense. Okay. I had somebody give me incense one time and said it was holy incense. <laughs> that it was frankincense and myrrh. Holy yeah. And they wanted me to, they said the Lord told them that if I was to burn it, to burn it during in my prayer room and that I would have an encounter with God. And I just said, okay, thank you. No, I tossed it. Mm -hmm. I sure did. It's, it's in the landfill now. Seven, employ your spiritual weapons to battle them, including the name of Jesus, the sword of the Lord and the warring angels of God. Eight, go for deliverance <laughs> periodically. To ensure that they do not regroup against you. Phil says that. Howard says that as well. You know, Howard, you know, teaches that you, we should do self-deliverance. Like, look at it like maintenance. At least every six months, do self-deliverance on yourself. You know, ask the Lord, Lord, what do I need to, what do I have that I need to be delivered of? You, because you don't know. You don't, you don't know. Uh, and then there's there's prayers there. Now, the prayers, you know, these prayers here, they, they're going to be different for everyone because not all of them may apply to you. None of them may apply to you because maybe you're not dealing with marine spirits. Um, but there's these are suggestions there. Uh, let's go through them real quick. Uh, one, I renounce and break every evil dedication to marine and water spirits. Okay. 
I break the backbone of marine witchcraft operating against my life. Marine deposits in my body come out with all your roots now in Jesus' name. So you kind of get the idea. Uh, you stubborn marine spirit spouse, be separated from me by the power in the blood of Jesus. I renounce all covenants, pacts, promises, ceremonies, and rituals I participated in in dreams. Um, every marine item in my possession, be exposed and be removed from my possession in the name of Jesus. Um, somebody gave me a, what's those conch, conch shells? What is it called? Conch shells? Yeah. They're really cool. Put it on, you can hear them and all that. Really cool. And it was made so that you could blow through it like a horn, like a, like a shofar or something like that. And, uh, I didn't have it very long because the Lord said, get rid of it. And, and I had to get rid of it because the Lord told me to. Um, and I, and I don't always, I didn't really go into it with the Lord. Like why explain that to me? I just knew I had to get rid of it. So I got rid of it. Um, maybe about three months ago I was reading, I wasn't even looking into this, but I read an article that those are used to summon Marine spirits. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying all of all of them, but, but they're used to summer Marine spirits and think about it. What do shofars do? Okay. They open portals. They summon the, the angels, things like that. Okay. Uh, marine deposits. Okay. Four, not five marine. Let's see. Marine, every Marine item in my possession, be exposed and be removed from my possession. In Jesus name, every problem that has come into my life through contact with any marine agent be divinely resolved by the blood of Jesus. Marine witchcraft verdicts and judgments against me. I renounce and revoke in the name of Jesus. Anything programmed in my life from the waters, I break the power of it now and I command it to cease in Jesus name. Any serpent dispatched against me from the waters, I break your hold on my life and I cancel your assignment. I curse the fruit of your works. Uh, 11, any power burning evil candles and incense against me. I bind the spirit operating behind these works. Oh, <laughs> what was that? Oh, <laughs> that was a heavy purse. <laughs> right. Something trying to get out of their purse. <laughs> something trying to get out of that purse. <laughs> so as you're watching from <laughs> live stream, somebody, something fell on the floor and you know, Samuel, he's silly. He's silly. Um, all right. I was praying for someone one time and, uh, and all of a sudden I felt led to pray to break the power of candles that are being lit against this person. I don't always pray that way, but this particular time I did and she stopped me. She said, why did you pray that? And I said, cause the Lord told me to pray that. She said, we have altars in my house with all these candles that we light, oh, you know? Yeah. And I said, well, that's probably the problem. You probably should get rid of all that stuff. But, you know, we, we have a candle to this saint and a candle to that saint. And, and I said, mm, that's the problem right there. You got to get rid of those things. Okay. Sometimes we do it to ourselves and we don't even realize it. All right. Um, if you go to like a, a Spanish store, you'll see all those candles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. They, yeah. Uh, there's a, there is a, at, at this grocery store, HEB, they sell this soap that's made, it's made out of goat's milk. Okay. And they have like frankincense and myrrh. They have really cool scents, right? And I buy, I buy, the frankincense and myrrh and there's another one i buy i can't pronounce the name of it though uh, it's like a sandalwood or something like that anyway they have a new one out and i looked and i said oh that's and it's kind of red and it's got all these other swirl swirly colors in it and it's called dragon's blood <laughs> can you believe that dragon's blood and i texted to a friend of mine who might be watching right now I sent him a picture. I said, look at this. I'm going to buy it. And I'm going to take a bath and see what happens. And he was like, are you serious? And I said, I was joking, dude. Calm down. <laughs> Dragon's blood. 
I mean, what could possibly go wrong there, right? You got the blood of Jesus, and then you got the blood of the dragon. Hello. Water spirits, I'm telling you guys. How innocent that looks. All right, so... Um, <clears throat> Every evil material transferred into my body through contact with, mar with marine witchcraft agents, I command them to dissolve and digest out of my body in Jesus' name. 15. Now, how many times have we had, have you prayed for somebody? I know Howard has, I have, where people come and say, I got machines in me. Something's in me. There's something put me in me. This, this is what this is talking about. Okay. You've heard, prayed for people like that before? Yeah. Yeah. Like they, they put this thing in me and it's, it vibrates and it moves all over inside of my body and it's doing, it's a machine. When they said it was a machine, I was like, wow, okay, this is something new that the enemy's doing and we have to figure out how to deal with this stuff. All by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, 15, Lord Jesus baptized my life with the Holy Ghost and fire that cannot be penetrated or insulted in Jesus' name. 16, every arrow shot into my life by witchcraft powers from the waters, I command them to be broken in Jesus' name. That's a counterfeit of, uh, what is it? Um, it's here, let me tell you real quick. Just so you can see how, how they, they do this. Let me, let me pull it up on my Bible app. Talking about arrows, right? <clears throat> This is um, Habakkuk three nine. Your bow, this is talking about the Lord. Your bow was made quite ready. Oaths were sworn over your arrows. Okay. Now look at this one here. Every arrow shot into my life by witchcraft powers from the waters, I command them to be broken in Jesus' name. See the counterfeit there? 17. Every marine witchcraft chain binding my hands and feet from prospering be broken and shattered to pieces in Jesus' name. Every marine witchcraft burial of my life be reversed and resurrected by the blood of Jesus. I release my life from the grip of marine witchcraft powers. Um... Another form of, you know, like this, that 18 marine witchcraft burial of my life. Another thing they'll do is the witches will go and they will take soil from the grave of a righteous person and do witchcraft to bring that person into like a death spirit. Even though they may not die, they live a life where they wish they could die. Everything goes crazy. Yeah. And so, um, but that is easy to break too. It's so easy to break. Yep, it is. Um, and people, they trip when you tell them, oh yeah, I know what happened. Somebody using, you know, dirt from, from a grave and they're trying to kill you. But see, the Lord has to give you that discernment, that, that, yeah. that word of knowledge. Yeah. Um. All right, 19, I release my life from the grip of marine witchcraft powers. Eight, I smash every witchcraft pot and concoction being used against me to irreparable pieces. Uh, 21, I break all marine witchcraft mirrors being used to monitor my life uh, to pieces. That's another, that's also called, known as scrying, okay? You know what scrying is? Scrying is, uh, remember, uh, what is that? Mirror, mirror on the wall. I'm not going to say it all, but. Mirror, okay, that's that's scrying. You know, using a mirror, they use black mirrors. The best black mirror they love is this one here. Yep. Yep. For divination and stuff like that. And you don't think they can't use this? Or you already have Ouija board AI, right? Okay. Again, you have authority over all this stuff. Okay. Um <clears throat> I smash okay, twenty one, I break the mirrors, okay. 22, O oh Lord, begin to contend with all those who are contending against me and my family. 23, I pursue, overtake, and recover all my possessions from marine witchcraft covens. And 24, every evil 
done against me by marine witchcraft be reversed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Okay, I'm going to give you one verse uh, that just came to me right now so that you can keep this verse to pray it whenever you feel led to pray this verse. It's in Psalm uh, 139. Let's see. No, 138. 138, verse 7 and 8. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies. And your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. Amen? Amen. That's a good one right there to pray. That's uh, Psalm 138, verse 7 and 8. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another one. This is Job 5. This is, these are good to pray. Um, let's see. Okay, verse 8. This is Job 5, verse 8 um, through 16. But as for me, I would seek God, and to God I would commit my cause who does great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. He gives rain on the earth and he sends waters on the fields. He sets on high those who are lowly and those who mourn are lifted to safety. He frustrates the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot carry out their plans. Woo! He frustrates the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot carry out their plans. He catches the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the cunning comes quickly upon them. They meet with darkness in the daytime, and they grope at noontime as in the night. But he saves the needy from the sword, from the mouth of the mighty, and from their hand. So the poor have hope, and injustice shuts her mouth. Amen. Those are good passages to pray. Injustice shuts her mouth. Shut your mouth. Injustice. Amen. So when you pray these, this is what it means in where it says that um, the angels hearken unto the voice of the Lord, right? Doing the voice of God's word. They, they go off and they go and they do these things, right? Amen. All right. Okay. Any questions? Oh, that was Job chapter 5, verse 8 through 16. And then the other one was Psalm 138, verse 7 and 8. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, unless, unless you feel like the Lord's telling you to. I mean, I have some shells at the house and stuff like that. I have some things too, but there have been some times where I have collected like... Um, one time I collected some rocks at this. I was out at this uh, retreat one time. This was a few years ago. And I collected these rocks and I brought them home. And I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks later, there's like something was off in the house and all that. And I started praying like, well, what's going on? And the Lord told me it was those stones that I needed to get rid of them. Yeah. So I just threw them away. Threw them in my neighbor's yard. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> I'm kidding. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Look what I got for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Right. So did it stop? Oh, it finally stopped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. Uh huh. Okay. Right. 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 Mm hmm. Okay. Mm hmm. Right. Mm hmm. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Projecting it back on you. Yeah. So. Right. Oh. Uh-huh. All right. There you go. So, so those that are watching by live stream. So we have some Erin here, and she's what she's talking about is um, somebody was you know, and I say this all the time: pay attention to your dreams because a lot of times God's speaking to your dreams, but things are being exposed also through your dreams. And so she was dealing with headaches and things like that, and she was having dreams of this particular person that you worked with, no. or somebody at the church. Okay, the church that she went to church with that was saying bad things to her in the dream. So she would pray and it would get better, but then it would come back on her. So eventually she confronted the person about it and the person tried to deny it. And then the person tried to say that she was the one who was doing it, but eventually it got broken and she got see, she got set free from that. So pay attention to your dreams. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mhm. 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 Pray over it. Get it the Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, I had a friend of mine who called me. He's in Africa right now. He's there for a few days, but he called. Oh, he texted me and he said, "Is it? Can you? If if you have an item that has a demon in it, can you cast the demon out of it and yeah. it'd be okay?" And I said, uh, it depends on who you're talking to, who you're asking. Me personally, if I knew that it had a demon in it, I wouldn't even want it, you know. And uh, I said, but there are some some groups, some circles that will say, yeah, you can just, you got the blood of Jesus, just pray over it and and you'll be okay. But me personally, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. And uh, I said, why come you ask me? <laughs> And uh, he said, well, I was at a I was at the market and uh, there was all these figurines and all that. And I bought one because it was really cool looking and all that. And I bought it and then I took it back to my hotel room and then I had some really bad dreams last night. And I said, yeah, get get, get rid of it. Yeah, you don't want to bring it. You don't want to bring it back. 
and bring it back with you. Well, you know, so that's that's a that's like a no brainer, right? But when it's something that is of great value that's given to someone, you can you can kind of go back and forth like, well, maybe, you know, if I pray or, or but this has been in the family for a long time or whatever, you know. Um, but if it's something of great value, I think Herb shared a story one time about turtles. Was it a turtle or what was that? It was something that was bronze or something like that. Horse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's all kinds of things like that. And you never really realize that. And sometimes it's so, it, it, you know, after the fact, you look back and you're like, I should have known better, you know, but yeah. So, Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. So it could be anything, guys. It can be a Bible. You know, it could be a Bible. Yeah. I had an experience in uh, Africa. I was two years old. And she was living in this church house. So I prayed over this woman and she had lost a good toe in her leg. They got back and the couple I saw uh, a month later and they had been sick with a flu or cold the whole time. They said, our whole family was sick. I said, well, did you bring anything back? Well, I didn't come with it. They said, well, no, you pray over everything. And there was a sign that said, oh, stuff for the rice. So we bought rice at the store and split it up among the family, and they all got sick. Mm. Yep. They broke off the witchcraft, and they all got blessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. It is that real, yeah. Rice, food. There you go. So. All right. Anything else, guys? Let's see, got you stirred up. true you know because uh you just don't know what's going on behind doors at their home and what they're doing you know unless they're making it obvious they make it known to you um you know the statue of uh is it gabriel or michael and he has uh satan under his feet in chains michael yeah i was at uh mardell's one time and i saw that and i was like oh yeah that's cool that's awesome i bought it took it home i had it there in the house for a while and then one day I was in my prayer room and I was just there and I turned and I was looking at it and, and the Lord was like, I want you to get rid of that. And I said, really? He's just, just, just like putting the devil in his place, right? He was like, no, yeah, get rid of it. It's, it's not good. It's bad. So I started looking online into that and all that and it was not good at all. So, but watch this though. This, this is how you, you, you just don't know how much you're being watched at times okay so i said okay so i put it out and at the same time i got a call from someone this this woman 
who was coming to my meetings who at first I didn't suspect anything, but then I started to after a while and the Lord showed me who her real intentions. Anyway, I put this little statue out. She calls me. She says, Hey, are you home? And I said, yeah. She said, I'm going to drive by. I got a gift for you. And I said, Oh, okay. I said, what kind of gift? She goes, Oh, you're going to love it. Wait till I get there. It was the same statue. This big, huge, huge. She said, somebody gave this to me. And when I saw it, I knew it was yours. I knew it was not mine. And I had to come straight over here and bring it to you. And I said, no, I can't take that. <laughs> and she said, no, it's yours. And she like left it and walked away and got in her car to leave. And I said, no, you got to take this. She said, it's yours. You have to keep it. And she drove off. So I called her and I said, you need to come get this thing. Because if you're not, if you don't get it, I'm going to put it out to the trash. And she, she wouldn't come for it, so I put it out in the trash. A couple of broken wings and, a, you know, things like that. But so anyway, this stuff is real. You have authority over it. You have an anointing. Um, you don't really deal with a lot of it unless you open doors. Um, or sometimes you, you do deal with some, you get targeted sometimes. But once you once the Lord shows you that you're being targeted, that's it. You break it and you're done with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How you do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If they don't want to be helped, they don't want to be helped. I would pray for them to, to, for God to bring them to the understanding that they need to be set free. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Yeah. I would. I have somebody like that in my family that is, that is just violent with me whenever she sees me. She's a distant relative. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Sylvanier stuff is bad too, yeah. It can be. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so you see, there's, you know, we all have stuff, you know, that, that, you know, we're, we're all thinking of these different, you know, things and it's good. So we'll keep talking about it. Let me just go ahead and wrap up. And if y'all want to keep talking, we can, um, because I find this stuff fascinating. I love it. I love it. This is better than scary movies. <laughs> Amen. All right. So I want to thank you, uh, those who are watching by live stream. Thank you for joining us. And uh, remember, you can always email me. And if you have any questions or anything like that, let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. If I don't have any answer to your question, I'll get one. Give me some time and I'll get you one. Um, and uh, also, if you know, uh, please make a donation to the ministry. You can do that at smashingpillarsinternational.org. We appreciate your donations. I want to also thank everyone and everyone that was here, if you if you were able to participate, those by live stream as well, in uh, the multi-tools that we bought for Mark. Yeah. Um, well, we've already reached our goal. And um, so originally, the multi-tools were going to cost $800, a little over $800. And so, um, so I sent out an email requesting donations and like i mean i i mean my button was still warm and the donations started coming in right away it just was a real blessing and then um and we far surpassed the goal i think we got like thirty six hundred dollars or something like that thirty seven hundred dollars okay then when i went to actually order the the multi-tools through amazon and ship them I, I got this message that we don't ship that to that address you have to go through amazon global which i didn't even know 
existed. So in Amazon Global, I found something similar, but they were a little more expensive. And uh, so it was, uh, I got 40 of the multi-tools for $1,800. And then also what I thought this was really cool, Amazon, you know, there are, there's a VAT tax that you have to pay over there. Okay. Um, so what they do is they estimate what that VAT tax is going to be. And they take that extra money as a down payment, a deposit. So I paid that as well. So that all he has to do is just pick up the package over there. And then uh, the remaining portion actually wired that to him because there are other, it was like $1,800, 18, uh, eight, uh, $1,815 wired that to him because there are other necessities that they need over there because you, you see they all of a sudden they call what is it 320,000 uh, reservists and they don't have everything in stock that they need for these guys and so a lot of them are doing without you know Carolyn Hyde do you know anyone knows who Carolyn Hyde is okay she was in town she was uh in Hempstead yesterday I sent the email right so she, she has a ministry called Heart of God Ministries. Yeah. They're in uh, Israel. She lives in the Galilee. Okay. And uh, they do, God is using them mightily. I mean, there's a lot of uh, Jewish people and Israelis that are coming to faith in Yeshua through their ministry. And um, so she comes to the States from time to time. And they do a lot of, you know, they go all over the country. They're, she's uh, leaving to Florida, I think, tomorrow. And then from there, she goes back. And uh, anyway, so I saw her yesterday in Hempstead and uh, originally I was going to ask her to take the multi-tools. And then I said, no, nah, if I know her, she's probably taking a whole bunch of stuff back with her. Well, when I told her about the multi-tools, she says, I'm taking a whole bunch of those too. She said, I, I've got a bunch and they had a bunch of other tools and supplies that they need that she's taken back over there as well. Um, she has, she has a son that has been activated or called back in the reserve. She, she said, he hasn't got his, his orders yet, but if he does, he'll be, um, I think, in the front line in Hezbollah. So those of you who, who ordered, you know, who participated in that, I want you to know that we were able to bless them with 40 multi-tools, guys. And so you, you have no idea. You know, my friend over there, he's a sergeant. His name is Mark McKaylin. He said that that tool right there, it could mean the meaning of, between life and death for people out there because they get called out on the field to help someone who is injured and they need those to like sometimes to hurry up and get cut their clothes off of them, their shoes off of them. And uh, every second is precious in, in saving a life. He said that right there is, is, is invaluable. And so when I text him and I told him, hey, you know what? I, got, I ordered 40 of them for you. He was so blown away. And he thought, he thought I was paying for everything out of my own pocket, you know? And I said, well, he said, I'll pay you back every penny. I'm going to pay you back as soon as I can. I said, no, 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 no. I actually put an email out and I asked people who wanted to participate. So I got a lot of donations. And he said, what? Why would people do that for somebody they don't even know? Just so blown away by it, you know? And so he's a believer today anyway, but um, he's real, very, very humble, very thankful and uh and so he wanted to say thank you once he gets those multi-tools he said the first thing he's going to do is he, and he as he gives them out to the people in his platoon or troop or battalion or whatever it's called um he said i'm going to make a video a thank you video and i'll send it to you with me and the guys and i said man that would be awesome so so we'll be we'll, we'll be getting that sometime soon i hope uh so smashing pillars international.org Please, this is good soil. It's fertile soil. If you, if you're, if you've been coming to the ministry, if you've been coming to my website, I know that the the, the tapes there or the videos they've been helping you. It's good soil, man. If you're ever in a ministry, not just mine, but anywhere you go and you hear a message that you say, "Man, I needed that. That's exactly what I needed. This is going to help my life change." That's good. That's good soil right there. Don't sow, don't sow to the man. Don't sow to the to that ministry. Sow to the anointing that that yeah. man is carrying. Yeah. Sow into that. Sow into the word, and it'll produce a harvest for you yeah. everywhere. I'm not talking about just this one here, but um, anywhere you go, do that. Okay. One more thing too, if you if you're believing the Lord for something and you go to Him in prayer, I learned this from a man many many years ago in Florida, and I never forgot it. He told me three things. He pulled me aside. He said, "I want to tell you something," and he whispered them in my ear. 
He said, whatever you're believing the Lord for something and you pray and you ask him for something, always ask him, now what's the seed I need to sow to get what I'm believing you for? Amen. The other thing he said, the Lord said to stop telling you to tell you to stop limiting him with your prayers. Okay. Do you know we can limit the Lord with our prayers? And the other thing he said was stop limiting him with your words. Don't limit, don't limit him with your words. Okay. Um, this is impossible. Well, with God, all things are possible. All right. So let me just, you know what to do. I got to, I'm going to release this blessing over you guys. And then we'll, we'll let you go by live stream. Put your hands up in the air, bow your head and close your eyes and receive this blessing. See the Lord himself laying his hand on you. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. And the scripture clearly states that by me praying this over you, that I have marked you with his name and he will bless you. Father, I thank you for doing it in Yeshua's mighty name. All right. That's a, that was the, you know, Nephilim Marine Water Spirits uh, part three. I, I'm sure that was a lot to digest. And, um, and uh, I, I pray that you got free. If, you, if you're dealing with that or if you were dealing with that, I pray that just while you were listening to the message, you got free from that. And uh, if not, look for a good local uh, deliverance ministry that can help you. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions, you can always, you know, send me a message through my website. You can go to smashingpillarsinternational.org. There in the contact uh, tab, you can send me a message if you want to. And, uh, you know, I try to answer those as quick as possible. It may take me a, a a day or two but i do get back to you eventually and uh, also thank you so much for uh the financial support and the and the uh the intercession covering and you know with your intercession i really appreciate that you know please please make a donation today while you're there at the website uh, your donations make it possible you know for me to keep doing what i'm doing and uh i know that god is making a difference i know the ministry is 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 bearing fruit i know it's a it's it's a fertile soil and I don't say that, um, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that I say that humbly. I'm not in any way being prideful. I'm just saying that humbly because I see the lives that God changes. He's changed many lives through the ministry and, and it's, uh, it's very humbling to be a part of it also. Um, so yeah, thank you for, thank you for your generosity. Those who, you, you know, you, you know who you are, you always support the ministry and, uh, it means a lot to me and it and, and it means a lot to the Lord. And I just pray that the Lord will bless your seed and produce, let it produce much, much, much harvest for you. And uh, so let me go ahead. And uh, before I let you go, put your hands up in the air, bow your head, close your eyes and receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. Shalom, 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 rest, peace. Father, I thank you, Lord, that I've marked my brothers and my sisters with your name and that you will bless them. Lord, I thank you for doing that in Jesus' name. All right, my name is Samuel. You've been listening to Smashing Pillars, and until next time, shalom, shalom. <laughs>